Hey everyone, this is Genesis. I'm coming back to you with an Arma 3 uh, guest coding thing to show off here. I have been making some computer systems in Arma 3 that can that are very modular and can be tasked with doing almost anything you'd want and fairly user friendly. I'm going to show you today um, that you can, well, have fun with. Uh, first I started doing this, I found it to be rather pointless, so it's kind of a fun exercise, but I think I'll start using it in some of my missions as a general point for players to go to to actually engage in certain things in a mission than just relying on ad actions everywhere. It feels a little bit more intuitive. So by modular, what I mean is I wanted to create a, a computer system that felt dynamic. Uh, you can have a network system, you can hack into the computers, you can, you can upgrade the security, you, know, uh, you can transport hard drives and things like that across, maybe for little missions, stuff like that, just to make ARM a little bit more interesting, and it's all going to be script form. So I have kind of an early version of it right now. I have three computers set up, uh, each with different properties here. So we have an old computer here. We have a new fancy computer here, and then out there, which you probably saw, we have one that's set up to do an actual, probably helpful function uh, to a helipad, to give you an example of how that works. So, uh, there's a lot of nuances here I'm going to talk about. I'll try to keep it rather short. So each computer can, you know, can actually, down to how long it takes them to boot. So here we go, we have an old laptop. I'm going to go ahead and try to boot into it now. Okay, so first thing here is we have, first thing you see is a login screen. You can say to have a computer to have a login screen or not. You can record a login. You can set the login in the mission file beforehand, or you can leave it blank, and then the user can create their own login. Right now, the default password is going to be admin. Uh, login is going to be admin. I can hit the login button here. You can see nothing's going to happen. And so I type in admin, admin. And it's going to prompt me to create a new password. Now, all these passwords are stored as plain text, so do not put anything, you know, important here. But now we're going to create a new username. You can have as many usernames as you want. But this computer is really slow. So I could sit here and watch this if I wanted to. Or I can come into this one here. You can hear that other computer is actually still ticking away. You can actually log out and let it log, you know, walk away from it while it logs in. So I'll create a new one. And you can see this one's much faster at loading in. Yep, and I can load in here. And I can back out and go to this one. Yep, you can see the message. It won't let me go back in because it says it's still booting up. These two computers are, I know, I just finished. These two computers are identical except for this one's much slower. So you can see finally now, boom, I'm in. Okay, now you're noticing I can go into these machines pretty easily here. Alright, pop in this one, pop into this one. There's no password being required. Well, you gotta remember to log out. There's a little log out button down here. You double click that, shuts it down. If I go back up here, I can log in. Now, since I just set up a username for this one, that admin admin won't work. That won't work. I have to legitimately put in the same password. I accept a password. So there you go. Just like you'd expect a computer to do, right? Fancy, sweet. Of course, in this, you can click and drag around the icons. These don't save their positions right now. I'm trying to debate if that's even useful or not. Okay, so this one has three, and I'm going to launch, when I release this, it's going to have some default uh, apps, quote-unquote, on it, some default functions that will be tied to it. So here's the help function that I have for these the setup for these computers. I can double-click on this, and then you can see it brings up a little menu here that just kind of explains about what's going on. There's a little text message here, I'll put updates here. It even has a hyperlink that just to show, for example, you can hyperlink things and that one hyperlinks me straight to Armor Theory's website. So you can link things to your squad website, your unit website, whatever you want in here. All in the, you know, a pretty easy to read menu and it's not an ad action. Okay. And of course you can check this around and have fun with these. And then I have a little notepad thing. This is just to show you how complex you can make things. So here's a little notepad function. This one took me like about an hour to write. Uh, but you open this up, okay, a little notepad opens up, you can just come in here and type, hello, please leave your weapons at the door. Now this is, a uh, text field the left, you can see there's some um, uh, commands here, uh, you get some hints, and this text box supports structured code, and there's a link to structured code right here. So I can come in here and I can read, even as someone who maybe doesn't know much programming, well, gee, okay, um, 
I can see if I want large text, I'm going to want this. So I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to put, uh, maybe I'm going to want this to be in the note very big. Okay. But then, oh man, so how do I get a new line? Oh, oh, line break. Here we go. Okay, so I can just copy this. Do that. Okay, and I can do shift enter just for visual effect. I can go, thank you for your cooperation. And then I can do a couple more line breaks here. And then I can come in here. Maybe there's like a font. Oh, there's different fonts right here I can use. Oh, I can even put links in here. I can do my own links. Okay, let's try a link. Okay. So maybe we'll link to Armor 3's website again. Okay. Click here for an awesome game. And then maybe I'll take some of those line breaks away. Um, put more right there. And then I'll sign, like, maybe I want to sign the bottom of it. So maybe, is there, like, a, I can change my font? Do a search for font here. Okay. Oh, there we are. We can do, oh, we can change the color. Okay. I'm going to get red. Maybe I want to, uh, maybe I just want to change the font here. Um, maybe we have different fonts. Uh, maybe I want to do uh, whatever this one is. And change the font to that. And then put Genesis. Cool. Okay, so I have my note I want. And then up here I can select which object I want the note to be on. Okay, maybe we'll... Uh, I'll just stick with the piece of paper. And then I can even select the texture I want to be on that note. Um, there's a picture of gun. There's a good wide range here. It doesn't have everything, but it you know, should serve most purposes here. Maybe I'll put this like you know, as a notice, right? Or, yeah, I'll do that. And then I'll just hit the, this print button. Boom. Oh, I knocked out of the computer. That's got to be fixed. But now I can run around and figure out where I want to pin up this note. Of course, it's not uh, perfect. Yeah, you see an error message there. Maybe I want to pin up this note here. Okay. And then now, anyone can read my awesome note. Hello, please leave weapons at the door. Thank you for your cooperation. Click here for an awesome game. There it is. And now it's there. And that's joint in progress friendly. Alright. And that's just an example of you and these are easily editable. So there's that computer and I come back over here to my computer. I knocked it on the ground, but that's okay. So I can still get access to it. It's fine, I'll turn around. So you see that and then make sure I log out. Okay, so there's that. So that's kind of, you know, silly, right? Uh, it's neat and all, but what's the point? Well, you can change the computers to have whatever programs you want on them. Really easy with a simple command in the editor. It doesn't take a lot of coding at all. And so people can easily share little applications and things that they wrote with each other too. So I can, this machine up here is different. So we got a bird here. I want to change the loadout. So I boot up this machine here. Oh, look at this. I have a little loadout. All this has is a loadout. There's no logout. There's nothing. You can see I don't, I don't even have to put in a password because this one doesn't require a password. I set a variable on it. I don't want a password. I don't want a username. I just want it to boot straight in to the screen here. And I just want people to be access to this loadout application or function that I wrote. So I can double click on it. And I just pulled this function out of uh, somewhere on the internet. Uh, this is Zelo's loadout version. Um, and I can come in here and maybe I'll put scalpels on everything. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, and then I think this is bugged. This is old version, but I'm gonna have to, you know, that's just for showcasing. They can come over here. I can get. Oh, wrong guys. Well, maybe manual fire. And you can see. Yep, I have nothing but scalpels at the top right. So like it reloaded them all correctly. Neat. So you can see. You can, your imagination can go wild with it. You can hook up artillery systems so that anything you want to do, you can hook up. Uh, well, I was going to make it for this video, but I said screw it. Um, you can make a little button you click on, you can uh, have a camera pop up, you can cycle through uh, all the units on your side, you can picture in picture watch them. Or you can have it attached to a vehicle, you can access it anywhere and do any kind of operations you would want to do that. Uh, missions where you go steal a machine or a hard drive from a machine, bring it over, or you have know, it boot really slow, so you have to defend it while you're, you know, it's booting. Or you could do, uh, you know, all sorts of crazy things that like hack into someone else. The net networking stuff hasn't been created yet. It'll be fairly basic. Um, 
use this kind of sky's the limit with whatever armor 3 is capable of. So let me show you how easy it actually is to um, do something. We're going to create a very simple program. It's just going to uh, set the players into the sky or something silly, right? So let's look at this computer right here. So you can see there's some different things in here. It's just a simple variable. It's called Genesis App List Load, and then I just you just list the apps you want to have loaded. And these are I'll show you where these are located. And then all it is to make a computer a computer is you just add an add action to it with this argument here, spawn gen boot computer. You give it the target, pass the target, and then how long it want it to take to boot. Okay, and then the set variable no log on that just says that I don't want it to have a log on. I want it just boot straight and no security. I don't need it to. It's a public machine. Okay, so very easy. I'm gonna try to make this as easy as possible. All right. well, there's a lot of code in here. You can ignore 90% of it. There's two files. I'm gonna close this out. Z load. It's a lot, but there's two files. That this makes really gen computer, gen computer apps. Okay. So in here, the app solar is each and every little application or thing that may be needed for those is stored in here. They're all just these global variables. Very, yeah, they did this on purpose to make it very easy to add your own. So you can see here's the printer one, the notepad one. Here's the vehicle loadout application. Here's the logout. The logout is actually an application. Global text. This is some commands that are needed. Uh, I may have put in here too. Here's the help command you saw. And then some more global functions that are needed and a list of potential textures and things that are just stored into memory. Okay. So. And then these are the ones that, these are the commands you can give to a computer. Applications so the computers recognize them. This is the code for the applications. And this function over here is how to actually execute to create the icons. So, we're going to, I'm going to create a timer here. And I think I have a little countdown right here. Yes, okay. Um, we're going to use that because I'm going to show you how long it takes me to create a very simple application. Uh, to show how easy this is for you guys. This is something I want to be very modular. People can kind of do what they want, and so it's less intimidating as possible. So, for the sake of ease, because you can give it whatever icon you want, we're just going to repeat use uh, this code of contact code, uh, one of these icons from up here. Okay. So, I want to create an application that makes the player set, the, set velocity to like a thousand, right? Okay. So, here we go. I'm going to start countdown. Yeah. All right, so first thing I want to do is gen computer. I'm going to copy the previous one, the previous applications in there. Okay, I'm going to call this this application to be called gen uh, velocity. Okay, and then its position I want it to spawn on the screen by default. Uh, it really doesn't matter. You can fine tune this with time if you want to, but I want to spawn it kind of, you know, in the middle ish. Uh, Left-ish, but well, it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, let's give it a different, uh, different picture. Um, so I'm going to use this code of conduct icon. Cool. Uh, I want it to say, uh, "Don't," you know, for "Don't touch." And then we want this to call the function gen velocity. Okay. So now we have to create that function, that application, right, under the Gen Computer Apps. So we'll go to the very bottom. It doesn't really matter where, but we're going to create a new one. Okay, just like that. And we, you know, we could easily, oops, just mess that up. We could very easily just copy this, you know, this one right here, right? But I will copy the parameters that do get passed along. And then we're just going to do. Um, I'm going to copy this chunk of code because this chunk of code closes the display slash slash computer, right? So I do want it to have it uh, close the display on the computer and set the variables appropriately. And then uh, we want to do player set velocity 00, zero 2000. Uh, let's do 500. Bam. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is go back into Arma. Whoops, what's going on here? This computer here. I'm going to add the application 
gen velocity. I just copied and pasted it right in. Save it. I'm going to hit play. And okay. Okay. I'm going to run up to this computer, boot it up. You can see now there's two applications, and this one says don't. Well, but I want to hit it. Oops! Well, shit. Okay, 57.25. Less than three minutes. If you add that in, and the code and all that. So, not too bad. You can even probably speed that up. But you can see that the goal is to make it. You can execute any code, more of a UI. It's more of just a flexible UI. I don't know what the purpose is. Some people might find a purpose for it. I'm going to use it here and there. Now I'm dead. Uh, I'm going to work on it a little bit more. I want to get some of the networking stuff up. Um, some examples. I want to get enough of the little you know, code snippets, applications, if you will, of how to you know, set up some hacking and, and all that. So, you know, some in, set up some of the more f interfacing for that, the networking stuff. And other than that, um, I wasn't going to go too overboard with it. I'm not going to have it require a router and a network, you know, and a, and a fucking satellite for a connection. No, it's just going to be easy peasy. You guys can add that in if you'd want to. Uh, we're going to kind of keep it like that. I will definitely add in the networking where you can see um, you know, computers nearby or something like that. So we will leave it at that. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.